Perhaps it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great Linux home brighteners, Linux Clear Gloss, Linux Cream Polish, and Linux Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. Today's curious adventure, Murder in the Night. Or Nick Carter and the mystery of the milkman's discovery. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter solved the mystery of the murder in the night. But before we do, listen to this. Homemaking is an art. And as a successful homemaker, you know that the real achievement is keeping your home attractive. That's why you use Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, to give your walls renewed loveliness. Now, to keep floors, woodwork, and furniture at their shining best, it's the three great Linux home brightness. Linux clear gloss, the durable super varnish that dries to an elastic, transparent surface which protects all wood and linoleum in your home. Linux cream polish, which cleans as it polishes, leaving no oily film on your furniture. And Linux self-polishing wax, which beautifies your floors with a satiny yet tough non-skid finish that resists wear, water, and dirt. Get the three great Linux home brighteners at your hardware, paint, or department store. Your headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. Nick and Patsy are spending a short vacation at the home of Walter Summers, sheriff of a small county in upper New York State. Peace reigns supreme over the Summers household as our story opens. A peace which unfortunately is rudely shattered by... All right, all right. Just a minute. Sheriff Summers speaking. Sheriff, this is Jed Peters. Yes, Jed. Well, what do you want at this hour of the morning? Sheriff, I'm at the Parsons place, you know, out on the edge of town. Yes, yes, I know. What's the matter? Well, I stopped in here a while back to deliver the Parsons their milk, like I always do. And when I got here, I found Laura and uh, Mrs. Parsons all tied up to a chair. Well, I asked her what had happened. She couldn't talk much, but she said something about a man killing her husband and tying her up. What? I looked in, and sure enough, Mr. Parsons is dead. Shot through the head. Better get out here right away. Mr. Parsons murdered? Yes, Sheriff. And Laura, Mrs. Parsons is in pretty bad shape. You better hurry up. All right, Jed. I'll be right over as soon as I can. Now, don't touch a thing, and don't let nobody else touch nothing. I won't. Goodbye. Hey, what's all that about, Walt? Oh, I waked you up, didn't I? I'm sorry. No, I ain't neither. Because I'd head to wake you anyhow. What, so early in the morning? Can't be more than six o'clock. It's quarter to six. Oh. But murderers don't care what time it is. Murderer? Yeah. Oh, don't tell me somebody killed somebody way up here in the country. Yes, darn it. First time in 16 years of being sheriff I ever had a murder in this county. I'm sure glad you're here. Oh, now look here, Walt. I came up here for a rest, not to chase down a murderer. You're a good chap. You don't need me. Maybe not, but you're coming along just the same. Oh, no. Get up now before I pull the clothes off the bed and pour this pitcher of water over you. All right, all right, all right. I suppose there's no way out. But you ought to be in charge. Well, if that's the way you want it, that's all right with me. Now hurry up and get some clothes on while I tell the medical examiner to meet me at the Parsons' place in 15 minutes. Surprise, Patsy didn't want to get up and come along. Well, when I asked her, she just said she'd see us later. Uh, said she wanted to get all the beauty sleep she could first. <laughs> Looks as if she was going to get the vacation, not you. Don't fool yourself. I'm going to see that this killing is solved in record time. If I have to prove I did it myself, anything for peace and quiet. You know, it's funny about the Parsonses. Young Henry Parsons and his wife, a right pretty little girl she is, too. They come to town about two years ago. Stayed at the hotel till they found a house that they like. It's a little bungalow. Built right smack on the edge of the cliff overlooking the river. The fellow that owns the bungalow, he sort of took a liking to Henry and got him a job in the lumber mill. He's been there ever since. Good steady worker, they tell me. Did they have any enemies? Oh, not so far as I know. They never went out much, but everybody liked him. He was a real nice fellow. And if ever I saw two people in love with each other, it was them two. Yeah, they was more lovers than married folks. These ways more than most married folks that I've seen. Hmm. This is going to be pretty bad for her, then. 
Losing the man she loved. Yes, you're right. There, that's the house. The gray one with the smoke coming out of the chimney. Oh, I tell you, it's going to be terrible, Nick. I'm dreading having to ask her any questions about it. Uh, you wouldn't want oh, to... Oh, no. No, no, not much I wouldn't. I'm just a private in the rear rank today. Uh, I thought you wouldn't. Well, this is it. Might as well get over with as soon as I can. Come on, let's go in. Door's probably open. Yes, it is. Doug Winslow ought to be here in just a few minutes now. He only lives a few miles further from here than I do. Morning, Sheriff. What? Doug, you here already? You must have flew over. Well, I left soon as I got your message. Well, good for you. Uh, meet Mr. Nick Carter, a friend of mine. Hello, Mr. Carter. Morning, Doctor. Parsons is dead, all right. Shot right through the head. He's there in the dining room. Uh, Miss Parsons taking it pretty hard, is she? Terrible hard, Sheriff. I put her to bed in the spare room. Somebody gave her a real good sock in the jaw, judging by the looks. I'd like to give her a sedative, but I knew you'd want to talk to her first, so I've been waiting till you got through. Oh, thanks, Doc. I knew I could count on you. Say, where's Jed? I don't see him around. Well, Jed felt that babies had to have their milk, murder or no murder. So I told him to go ahead, but to come back soon as he could. And I told him not to tell a soul what happened here. Well, that's something anyway. I hope he minds what you told him. Now, look, Sheriff, you going to question Mrs. Parsons now, or is she... Yes, right now, Doc. Come on, then. Come on, then. Right with you, Walt. Morning, Miss Parsons. I'm terrible sorry to hear about Henry. Now, can you tell me what happened? I... Do my best, Sheriff. Good girl. Now, suppose you start right at the beginning and and just tell us whatever you can. Well, I was asleep when I heard a loud noise. It woke me up. What kind of a noise? I don't know, just a loud noise. Like an explosion. Like, like a... Yeah, all right, all right, we know what you mean. And then what? I woke up and found that Henry wasn't in bed beside me. That scared me, so I called him. And I started to get out of bed. And I saw... I saw... Yes, Miss Parsons. What was it you saw? Henry on the floor. All right, steady now. Take it easy. And what did you do then? I screamed. The man hit me on the chest. That's all. Mrs. Parsons, did you get a look at this man who hit you? Did you tell us what he looked like? About medium size. Dark him. An old clothes he hadn't shaved for several days. With a scar across his forehead and down over his cheek. Did you ever see him before? No, never. Well, now, I suppose you go on with your story. When I became conscious again, I was gagged and tied up in one of the kitchen chairs. The man said he was sorry he had to kill me, but he couldn't take any chances on my telling the cops about it. Did he have a gun, Mrs. Parsons? Yes. I could see it in his pocket. He said he couldn't shoot a woman. He knew a better way to do it. And what did he do? He turned on the gas. He said that was an easy way to die. And he left me. Where did he go then? I... I heard him moving around in the dining room. And I heard him climb out the window and shut it. And he left the gas turned on. Yes, I almost died before Jed got in and turned it off. And then Jed cut you loose. Yes, it seemed hours later. Well, that's about all she can tell us, Walt. You better not <laughs> Well, thanks, Miss Parsons. That'll be all for now. We'll let you know if we want to know anything else. I'll send the dog in. Thank you. Doc, you can put her to sleep now. Wait a About time, too. Poor kid. She's pretty near all in. Nick, you heard it describe that man that done it. Why, yes. Why? I know him. You know him? Not personally, I don't mean, but I know who he is. He's been hanging around town for over a week now. There's been two burglaries while he's been here, too. I've been going to arrest him on suspicion, but now, by gosh, i got a real reason to arrest him. Yes. Looks that way. Well, let's take a look at the body. Yeah. Doc said it was here in the dining room. Oh, yes, there it is. Must have just been coming out of the bedroom when he was shot. Yeah. Never knew what hit him, seems like. Now, look there, Walt. The center window. What? Oh, the catch is smashed. So that's how he got in. Yes. Hmm? Henry must have heard him in here, got up to see what was going on, and the burglar shot him. Footprints here on the windowsill, too. And I can see some prints down in the garden under the window. Well, sir, that settles it. 
I'm going to find that trap, and I'm going to get a confession now out of wait, it. Now, wait, Walt, wait. You have to have more evidence than a footprint to convict a man of murder. But Mr. Parsons can identify him easy, because she saw him. Well, suppose you go after him. I'll stay here and see what else I can dig up in the way of evidence. You, you don't want to go with me? No, it's better if we each work on a separate angle. Get results quicker that way. Okay, Nick. I'll get hold of my deputy, and we'll find that murdering tramp in short order. Just a minute, Walt, just a minute. I thought I heard someone just outside this door. You mean somebody's listening? I think so. Let me open the door. Well, Jed, what are you doing here? Uh, nothing. Well, Jed, you hear anything worth listening to? Uh, I wasn't listening. I just happened to be standing here. Well, if you wasn't listening, I don't know All what right, you... Well, let me handle this. Well, I... How does it happen you're back so soon, Jed? Got your milk all delivered? Well, just took the milk to houses where they got babies. Then I came back just like Doc told me to. Of course. You're telling anybody about the murder? No. Doc said not to. Mm-hmm. Jed, what time was it when you first heard Mrs. Parsons moaning? When I set her milk on the back porch about 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? Yeah. Uh-huh. But you didn't phone the sheriff until after 5.30. What delayed you? Why, uh, I was untying Laura, uh, Mrs. Parsons, and trying to get her to tell me what had happened. I see. Did you break in the front door or the back when you came in? Neither one. The back door was unlocked. Oh, the back door was unlocked. So you just came in that way. Why, well, sure I did. So what are you trying to do, get me boiled up? I'm not trying to do anything to you, Jed. I just want to get all the facts straight. Okay. What else you want to know? Suppose you tell us just what happened when you came in the back door. Well, Laura, Mrs. Parsons was tied up in one of the chairs near the gas stove. I smelled gas, and she said whoever it was had turned it on to suffocate her. So I, I turned it off. Guy, she was almost out. Then I cut the ropes that were holding her, and I let her loose. What else did she say? She didn't say nothing much. She was just about unconscious when I found her. She talked about a man coming in and uh, killing her husband and some other stuff I didn't get. I see. And what did you do then? Why, I, uh, I took her into the spare room and I put her on a bed. Then I called the sheriff. That's all. Jed, I noticed you're pretty friendly with Mrs. Parsons. What do you mean by that? Why, the way you call her Laura, that's all. Oh. Well, you see, uh, she's been giving me grammar lessons for about an hour every day after my milk's delivered, so uh, I got to know her kind of well. Mrs. Parsons is very pretty, isn't she? You're darn right she is. Well, look around the whole route. You like her very much, don't you? Sure I do. She's been awful good to me, and I... Well, I just like her. You in love with her, Jed? In love with her? Of course not. She's married. You weren't so much in love with her that you'd be jealous of her husband, want him out of the way, perhaps? Hey, look here, you. If you're trying to say I killed Mr. Parsons, you can turn... Shut up, Jed. Nick's doing the talking here. You're just answering questions. Well, he didn't think he'd come around here making cracks like that. I don't know as I'd call that a crack been considerable talk around town about how much time you've been spending with Miss Parsons. I never took no stock in it before, but now... I tell you, there's nothing to it, Sheriff. We were just good friends, that's all. All right, Jed, that's all for now. But don't go anywhere. But I ain't finished delivering my milk yet. Listen, if Nick says wait, you wait. I'll tell you when you can go. Murder's a serious thing. Well, of all the thick-headed dumb clock tires. Jed really had anything to do with it, Nick? He certainly had the motive and the opportunity. Can't afford to overlook any angle until we're sure. For the present, I suspect everyone. What the hell is that? That's Mrs. Barnum. There may be more trouble. Come on, come on. What new development is this? Has something happened to Mrs. Parsons as well as her husband? We'll see in just a moment. Nothing adds more to any room than a floor that's bright and shining and sparkling clean. And that's just the way all your floors look when you protect them with Linex Clear Gloss Varnish. For Linex Clear Gloss, the durable super varnish, gives a beautiful transparent gloss that keeps its beauty a long, long time because it wears and wears. Linex Clear Gloss is easy to apply, drying without brush marks. And it protects your floors, protects every wood and linoleum surface in your home against damage by hot grease, boiling water, perfume, fruit acid, even alcohol. What's more, Linex Clear Gloss is easy to keep clean, for it keeps dirt on the surface where you can wipe it away in a jiffy. Yes, Linex Clear Gloss is the finest protective finish you can use to keep your home looking lovely. That's why thousands of American homemakers depend on it. Ask for it by name. Linex, L-I-N-X, Linex Clear Gloss Varnish. You'll find all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone, the Miracle Wall Finish, at paint, hardware, and department stores everywhere. We left Nick and the sheriff racing down the hall toward the room where Mrs. Parsons had been sleeping in the effort to find out why she was screaming. Bad, Nick. Please, 
Mrs. Park, take this. You must. What's the trouble, Doc? She's having this time. I didn't give her a big enough dose before, I guess. Now she won't take nothing. Here, let me hold her. All right, now put the glass to her lips. Maybe she'll take it. Yeah. Uh, that did it. That'll keep her quiet. Gosh, I thought she was being killed from the noise she was making. You fellas find anything? Yes, sir. We found the marks where the killer, uh, that is, the fellow we think must have killed him, broke in through the window in the dining room. I'm going out after him now. Uh, where you be, Nick? If I'm not here, I'll be at your place. I'm going back and get Patsy as soon as I'm through here. We came up here for a vacation, you know. All right, Nick, I'll be seeing you. Good luck with your hunting. So far. We know that a burglar entered the Parsons' house last night and stole some silverware. Uh huh. When I went back to look after Walt left, I found the sideboard and the dining room was cleaned out. He may have shot Parsons when Parsons surprised him taking the stuff. What about Jed? Well, he certainly had the motive. He loved Mrs. Parsons. And he had the opportunity. That of being on the spot at practically the same time the murder took place. Do you know when that was? Well, we got there about six. He'd been dead roughly about an hour then. Which one of the two do you think did it? I'm not ready to answer that yet, Patsy. Oh. While I was looking over the scene of the crime after Walt left, I found several little things that indicate there may be a third party involved. A third party? Well, what do you mean? Look, I'm not kidding that bike, oh. Patsy. Pull over, pull over. Phew. Gosh, that was too close. Yes. These kids would learn to watch where they're going when they're on the main highway. Well, we missed him. Yeah. So it's all right this time. Can you uh, see the Parsons house in this road, Nick? No, the cliff's too steep. How are you going to know where to look, then? Before I left the house, I hung one of my handkerchiefs on the clothesline right at the edge of the cliff. Oh, that's good. I think we can see it from here. Should be just ahead. I'll watch for it. Ah, yes, there it is. Slow down a little. Okay. Now stop. Right here. Right. Good thing you hung that handkerchief up there. You'd never know there was a house there. Now, you know what you're looking for, don't you? Yes. You don't think it could have gone across the road, do you? I doubt it, Patsy. Take a trained baseball player to throw it that far. No, it's somewhere between the road and the bottom of the cliff. Now, you look from here up that way, and I'll look from here down. We've got to find it if it's here. We can't give up until we do. Thing those kids seen him coming this way, Sheriff. Saves us a lot of hunting around. See anything in that shack they told us about you? No, no, but it should be just ahead. Take it easy now. There it is. It's right, right there. All right. Now, listen, Pete. You stay out here in front. Keep behind that big tree and fire your gun over the shack once in a while to keep his attention on you. Huh. I'm going around back and creep up on him from that side. Then I'll get him before he knows I'm there, see? But keep hid. I don't want to lose the deputy. Okay, Sheriff. I'll watch him. Want me to start firing now? No, let me get a head start so you won't see me. And then start firing. I'll, I'll signal you when. Okay, good luck. There's a signal. Here goes. Get your hands up. We got you surrounded. You can't get away, Sheriff. Got him? Dog, nabbit. There ain't nobody here. Has he been living there, Sheriff? Yeah, he's been here all right. But he must have cleared out right after the murder. Must have got scared and run for it. Well, look, Sheriff. Huh? Here's a fork under this whole piece of carpet. Got a big initial P on it. Uh-huh. One of Parsons is likely. Oh, this our man, all right. Well, what now, Sheriff? We're going back to the office and send out an alarm for him. He won't get fur for he's nabbed. I'll see to that. <laughs> At your house, Walt. We found the gun. You got the man you went after? <laughs> we sure did. Good. Got him and the stuff he stole, too. He was caught in the next town trying to pawn some of that silver. My deputy just brought him in. What does he have to say? Oh, he says he found the silver in the woods near his shack. Says he never was near the person's house. Well, we'll change his mind for him when we show him what we know. Mm-hmm. 
Now, Walter, after I started thinking things over, I went back to Parsons' place. Found a couple of very interesting bits of evidence that I'd overlooked before. Suppose you take the burglar out there. I want Mrs. Parsons to identify him. I'll meet you there in 15 minutes. Okay, Nick. We'll be there. Good. I want to get back to my vacation. Well, now that we're all here, Doc, will you ask Mrs. Parsons to join us? I want her to identify this man. She's feeling a little quieter now. I'll get her. Have I got to stick around here forever, Sheriff? I've got a job to do. If I don't get back, I'll be fired. If you don't stay where you are, that'll be trouble. Now you sit down. But I've got to get back. Sit down. There's some things I want to ask you as soon as Mrs. Parsons gets here. Oh, well. Take your prisoner over to the other side of the room. She won't see him when she first comes in. All right, Nick. Come on, you. Come on. All right. Quit shoving. I'm coming. Carter, won't you make this as quick as you can? I don't feel I can stand much of his questions. We'll spare you all we can, Mrs. Parsons. But there are certain things we have to know. Won't you sit down here next to Patsy? Yes, here, Mrs. Parsons. Let me help you. All right. But I... Ah! There! That's the man! He did it! He hit me and tossed me out! Ah, you're nuts! I may have talked to you, but I never touched your old man. Well, uh, looks as if that settled it. If you're the one that hit her, you're the one that killed Henry. We found you with silverware on you, and Miss Parsons here identifies you. Now, are you going to admit that you did it? No, because I didn't. I swiped the stuff, maybe, but I didn't cook nobody. I just gave her a clout on the jaw to keep her quiet. Uh-huh. Well, Nick, what you got to say now? Are you satisfied? No, Walter, I'm not. There's several things that don't match up here. No, I don't know what's the matter with you, Nick. But I know you'll do it the way you want to anyway, so go ahead. Now, you. What time did you break into this house? About two o'clock. Did you see either Mr. or Mrs. Parsons? I looked in, they were both asleep. I didn't wake them up. You did? You woke Henry and... Please, Mrs. Parsons, please be quiet. Nick knows what he's doing. You just took what silver you could find and went out again, huh? Yeah. The woman woke up and was going to stop me, so I had to sock her one to keep her quiet. Then I ducked out. And that's all. He's a lying, thieving, murdering... I don't think so, Walt. But, Nick, listen... Now let me finish, please. Ted, what was Mrs. Parsons wearing when you found her this morning? Why, uh... She had a pink sort of house coat, lots of lace on it. Yes. Did she look pretty in it? She sure did. But that don't mean I had... Just answer my questions, please. Mrs. Parsons, did you ever see this gun before? What? No, I never saw it before. You sleep on two pillows, don't you? I yes. And you never saw this gun before? No. No, I didn't. That's peculiar. When I lifted the top pillow off your bed this morning, I found a little hollow on the top of the bottom one, and this gun just fits it. That's a lie. I, I have... Uh, you like Jed. He's a nice boy, but I... You I, liked your husband better. Of course. I loved Henry. Yes. You loved him so much you couldn't bear to have him leave you. Isn't that true? I, I don't... What are you getting at, Nick? I don't get this. Walt, Mrs. Parsons killed her husband. <laughs> I, I didn't. It was that man. Oh, yes, Are you crazy, Nick? What oh, makes you think she did it? Think? I know she did it. As I see it, she woke up and heard the burglar in the dining room. She'd already decided to kill Henry, but hadn't decided how to do it. And now the thought came to her that she could kill Henry and blame it on the burglar. She'd undoubtedly seen the man around town and knew exactly what he looked like. Remember that very excellent description she gave us, Walt? Well, sure, sure, but well, I... Well, she never saw him that clearly by flashlight. You're lying. You can't prove anything. About five o'clock, she got up. Took a gun from under a pillow, went into the dining room, and called Henry very excitedly. When he rushed out of bed to see what was the matter, she waited for him at the dining room door and shot him as he came through. Then she took off her nightdress and put on the pink house coat. I found the nightdress with some spots of blood on it under the mattress on her bed. You're lying. I wore that house coat to bed last night. I was cold. Yes. I... Was that house coat rumbled up when you saw it this morning? Why? Well, gosh, it looked like new to me. I thought so. Mrs. Parsons, you went to the kitchen. Waited until a few minutes before you knew Jed was due to arrive. Then you turned on the gas, tied yourself in the chair as best you could, and waited for Jed. You knew there was no danger of your suffocating before Jed arrived, and you knew that Jed was half in love with you already, and that when he found you in that very feminine and attractive garment, he'd never noticed that the knots which bound you were tied very clumsily and not very scared. Well, that's a lie. She was all tied up good and tight. That's what she wanted you to think. Well, why should she do it? Yes, Nick. What earthly reason would she have to do it? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Well, Remember when we approached the house this morning, we saw smoke coming out of the chimney? Yes, I... Well, and I remembered that smoke a little while ago. I went down to have a look at the furnace. I was curious whether there should be a fire going on a warm day like this. 
And I found this. A letter from Henry's real wife in the city, saying that she was happy he had at last decided to return to her and his son, from whom he'd run away when he came here with Laura. And there was the motive, plain enough. Laura couldn't bear the thought of his leaving her. It was the blow to her pride that he was tired of her. So she killed him. Her fingerprints are on this gun we found, if you want definite proof. All right, I killed him. And I'm glad. He couldn't treat me that way. But I never go to the chair. I killed myself first. Better take her away, Walter. And keep your eye on her. Murder demands that the murderer pay the penalty for his crime. Gosh, Nick, I still can't believe it. She was such a darn nice little girl. Why, Nick, if she hadn't tried to burn that letter, she might have gotten away with it. Yes, Patsy. That was what first led me to think she did it. Until I found that letter, I could find no motive for her killing him. And without the motive, nothing made sense. But the furnace was so choked with the ashes that the paper she tried to burn just smoldered. And where there's smoke, you know. Yes, I know. Where there's smoke, Nick Carter solved the case with it. In just a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. A home that's truly lovely is a place folks want to be. A place where there's fun and relaxation and real joy of living. Your whole family takes pride in your home when you keep it looking attractive with the three great Linux home brightness. Linux cream polish, for instance, which cleans as it polishes, gives your fine furniture a handsome luster, drying to a hard surface that leaves no oily film to attract more dust, to make more work. Yes, in one quick, easy application, Linux Cream Polish actually removes the cloudy accumulation of previous polish and dust, banishes messy fingerprints, and helps conceal ugly scratches. For Linux Cream Polish cleans as it polishes, without tiresome rubbing, saving one whole step in your cleaning day routine. So depend on this modern, easy shortcut to furniture beauty. Get all three great Linux home brighteners at your dealers now. Linux Clear Gloss Varnish, Linux Cream Polish, and Linux Self-Polishing Wax. In case your dealer hasn't received his supply of the three great Linux home brighteners, he'll have them soon. Ask him to save one or all of them for you. Acme will see that he gets them and you get them as quickly as possible. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. How about next week's story, Nick? Can you give us a hint? In spite of the fact that the doctor said it was heart failure, a young man felt so sure that his uncle had been murdered that he arranged a midnight seance with a famous medium. And had everyone who could have committed the murder there to see what went on. And did the medium succeed in contacting the dead uncle? Uh, she claims he did. Everyone there thought they recognized his voice. And did he accuse anyone of murdering him? That's where the story starts, Ken. And that's where it's going to end for now. Yes, him. yes, no more until next week. So long. So long, everybody. And so long to you, Nick and Patsy. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week. <laughs> Next week at this time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled Unexpected Death. For Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Seance Murderer. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is a copyright feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. It is presented at this same time and over these same stations by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux Clear Gloss, Linux Cream Polish, and Linux Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. In the Nick Carter Adventures, Lon Clark is starred as Nick. Helen Choate is featured as Pepsi. Original music is played by Lou White. The programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is Mutual.